So some of the things we've been doing over the last quadrennium is working with USA Track and Field. And we've been focusing on the horizontal jumps in particular, and also sprint starts with the Paralympians. And one of the key aspects that we're looking at is how they generate speed and how they use speed in their events. In sports biomechanics, it's really important that we understand the forces causing the motion that you see. So to do that, we actually put force plates in the training areas that the athletes are performing. Our job as scientists is to figure out how to help the athlete improve their performance, whatever that might be. So by using the force plates, we're actually able to measure the horizontal force time curves. And we can measure those forces, we get a sense of what it is about that foot contact that's working for them and what might be working against them. Now, in the starting blocks, you have an opportunity to generate forces in the horizontal direction. You can see that with the starting blocks, right? So that helps direct those initial forces in the direction you want to go. In the case of the sprint starts, they're very interested in generating that speed and keeping that speed. And so we look at the force time curves, and that gives us an idea of how effective that foot contact was. And because sprinting is a time-dependent activity, it's how fast you're generating the impulse that's going to be important. So in the horizontal jump, during the last foot contact, what happens is instead of keeping your horizontal speed, what you need to do is generate some vertical. Because if you have vertical speed at takeoff, it gives you time in the air so you can fly as far as you possibly can, which is the purpose of the event. So in a long jump takeoff, if we were to actually measure the forces, much like what we did in the running, we see that the vertical reaction force looks something like this during foot contact, where the forces are very high early, and then the area under this curve if we take away what body weight acting on them, the net effect of those gives us our vertical velocity at takeoff. You're watching people fly through the air. It's very exciting, actually. So some of the things you'll see is how quickly they run up during the run up. And what's really important about triple jump is the trajectory they take on that very first takeoff. If they go too high, it's really hard to land and then continue with their momentum. So you're looking for kind of a long, low trajectory so you can land it and jump again, right? So it's a hop, step, and a jump, which is gonna be in direct contrast to say, the long jump, where they're gonna come in with the same amount of speed, but this time they're gonna to convert to more verticals. The longer they're able to stay in the air and the more the run-up speed they can maintain, the farther the jump.